never found a policeman who should be permitted to carry a gun. It's insane! How, how are the police supposed to function without weapons? There are people out there who are demanding protection and they're entitled to it. How do we protect the public without weapons? I haven't completely worked that out yet. And what are we supposed to do in the meantime? I'm not sure. Well, how, how, what about the public? Should they be entitled to carry a gun? Are you crazy? This is ridiculous. And what you are saying, Doctor, is that no one should carry a gun. That's exactly what I'm saying, wise guy. <laughs> Wait a minute. You got a point there. Let me ask you another question. Between the public and the police, just as a general group, which would you say is more paranoid? Well, definitely the, the public. Well, if the public is more paranoid than the police, who would you rather see carry the guns? The answer is obvious, the police. Do you mind putting that in the report? <laughs> yeah, and while you're at it, would you add the special circumstances in the case of Detective Roger Howitz, who was doing his duty to the best of his ability, who was, who was uh, resisted forcibly by a suspect who insulted him? Wait a minute. Insulted him? <laughs> Robbery of progress, a bank over on 11th. Draw some weapons. Right. Uh, if you don't mind. By all means. <laughs> Something went wrong here. <laughs> Something went wrong here. Bonnie Miller will continue in a moment. We all use soap to keep us clean, but bar soaps end up sloppy and slimy. Pump dispensers are messy and clumsy. And with dish soap bottles, you really need an extra set of hands. Well, now there's Soap Magic, the easy-to-use, hands-free dispenser that works like magic. Just wave your hand, and it gives you the perfect amount of soap every time. Soap Magic eliminates the need for messy soap dishes and clumsy pump bottles. And it makes dispensing dishwashing liquid a breeze. Soap Magic works with all liquid soaps, lotions, and even hand sanitizers to eliminate the spreading of germs in your home. Perfect for preventing cross-contamination when you cook. Beautifully designed to match every decor. Just fill it with your favorite soap, and it's ready when you need it. With a built-in light and an optional chime, Soap Magic gives you just the right amount every time. Kids love Soap Magic, too. And because it's fun, they wash more often. Fill it with hand sanitizers to instantly turn your home into a germ-free zone. Put one in the workshop to clean up grimy hands without touching a thing. Soap Magic is perfect for bath gels and body washes, and you'll love it for your shampoo and conditioners, too. It makes applying body lotion and moisturizers a breeze. And when there's a baby in the house, it's like having an extra set of hands. A welcome relief for anyone with arthritis or joint pain. Soap Magic makes it easy to stay clean and clean up with just a wave of your hand. Similar products sell for up to $50. But call now and you'll get Soap Magic for the amazing low price of just $19.99. But wait, call right now and we'll double the offer and give you a second Soap Magic free. Just pay separate shipping. Yes, you get two Soap Magic hands-free dispensers a $100 value for only $19.99. This offer is not available in retail stores anywhere, so call and order now. To order, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-655-8298. That's 1-800-655-8298. So don't delay. Call 1-800-655-8298 and order today. It's good night, gentlemen. Good night. Nick, you can go home now. <laughs> You know, you keep looking at stuff like this long enough that you start getting tired of it. Yeah, it's uh, called aversion therapy. Yeah? Yeah, you know, it's like if you want to stop smoking, uh, they force you to keep smoking one cigarette after another until finally you're uh, sick of it. Okay. <laughs> well, good night, guys. Hey? Yeah. Where are you going with those? Oh, uh, I'm taking the cure. What do you mean you don't issue new policies to persons my age? Oh, really? Would you care for a suggestion of what to do with that rock of yours? No luck, huh? Nobody will cover me. Hmm. Oh, if Bernice finds out I don't have any insurance, it would kill her. <laughs> and she's not covered either. <laughs>
What's up? It's Rick Dees. And turn on your TV. Watch television. Sundays to WGN America. <laughs> it's out of sight retro night. Simple, uncluttered television with parts. Sunday only on WGN America. <laughs> One potato, two potato, huh? Party at the precinct. The Barty Miller New Year's Day Marathon. Feeling the fun only on WGN America. Book in part by Spariva Handy Haller. Anybody see the uh, file on uh, hallucinations? I didn't even know we had one. Oh, here it is. That whole thing is hallucination? Yeah. yeah. And that's just our precinct. You can imagine how many there are in the whole city, huh? <laughs> Be thankful they don't have enough brains to organize. <laughs> Nick, we're out of coffee. That's the last of it. I didn't get a chance to get down to the store. <laughs> how are we supposed to stay awake with no coffee? My grandfather told me an old oriental trick for staying awake if you had to. You convince yourself that if you fall asleep, you die. <laughs> thinking about it keeps you awake. What happens if you want to go to sleep, but you can't stop thinking about dying, huh? I don't know. <laughs> I think that's what opium dens are for. Well, we have been promised relief at 10 o'clock tonight. On clock. Yeah, they're trying to work up a shift out of three other precincts. Hey, things are uh, really that bad, huh? Half the plane close forces out with the, the flu. That's an epidemic. Uh, not quite. It's not official yet, but close. In any case, they're uh, sending a, a nurse down from the Board of Health to uh, give us all shots. Shots? Yeah, the swine flu vaccine. You mean uh, needles? <laughs> Look, uh, you're all welcome to use the couch in my office. Anybody wants to take a nap? Not me. Barnhuck. <laughs> Barnhuck, they don't have uh, uh, pills for that sort of thing. Medical research hasn't come up with it yet. So all they got is shots. I mean, needles. <laughs> What's your name and address? What's up? Fella yelling, stop me before I kill. Hello? Hello? Married, probably. <laughs> oh, uh, his name's Skopechny. Uh, this is the address he gave me. A cooperative psychopath. Harris. Well, Joe? Uh, check into that, but uh, be careful. Yeah, okay, Barney. Uh, pick up some coffee, huh? Uh, two pounds, drip grind. Hey, man, look. I got to go out into the dark streets of this asylum to try to find some wacko who's threatening to go off on a killing binge, and you expect me to remember to pick up two pounds of coffee, drip grind? Sorry. Write it down, man. <laughs>
they strut down Broad Street, a tradition that's timeless and true. The comics are witty, the fancies are pretty, and string bands are strumming there too. It's the most marvelous time of the year. I work all year to get you super low prices. Tara Swartz, Burlington Buyer. Now they're even lower. How low? Ridiculously low. We've just marked down millions of items. The year-end clearance at Burlington Coat Factory. Now up to 80% less than department stores. Whether you're across the street or across the ocean, Vonage makes it more affordable to stay close. Introducing Vonage World. Unlimited calls in the U.S. and around the world for only $24.99. Call 877-4-VONAGE now. Vonage World. No startup costs. No access codes. Just free unlimited calling around the world. Sign up now at Vonage.com and get one month free when you refer a friend. Vonage. Sounds good. What if the person of your dreams is out there waiting for you? And what if eHarmony let you communicate with that person for free? The New Year's free communication event this Wednesday through Sunday. Start your year off right. Communicate with your matches for free at eHarmony.com. It can be tough living with COPD, but I try not to let it slow me down. I go down to the pool for a swim, get out and dance, <laughs> even play a little hide-and-seek. I'm breathing better with Spiriva. Spiriva is the only once daily inhaled maintenance treatment for both forms of COPD, which includes chronic bronchitis and emphysema. I take it every day. It keeps my airways open to help me breathe better all day long. And it's not a steroid. Spiriva does not replace fast-acting inhalers for sudden symptoms. Stop taking Spiriva and call your doctor if your breathing suddenly worsens, throat or tongue swells, you get hives, or have vision changes or eye pain. Tell your doctor if you have glaucoma, problems passing urine, or an enlarged prostate, as these may worsen with Spiriva. Also, discuss the medicines you take, even eye drops. Side effects may include dry mouth, constipation, and trouble passing urine. Every day could be a good day to breathe better. Ask your doctor if once daily Spiriva is right for you. Start the year $10,000 richer with New Year, New You at WGNAmerica.com. Tell us how you'd use the money to improve your life, and you could start 2010 with $10,000. All right, stick with them and uh, take care of them, huh? All right. Well, it appears Kopechny wasn't uh, armed, but the minute he saw the squad car, he took off into the... your fish. Fish, you right? Yeah. Good night, Bonnie. Good idea. Check out and go get some sleep, huh? Who? Me? No, no, no. I'm, I'm fine. Come on, what are you talking about? You haven't been home in 16 hours. I'm okay. I can stay away from home as long as anybody. <laughs> Longer. We have a robber here, Captain. Mr. and Mrs. Fuller from Denver. Okay, thank you. I'll take care of it, sir. We've been in town 10 minutes, held up at gunpoint. <laughs> Some vacation. Welcome to New York, Fullers. Stick them up, tourists. It's our first visit here. I know just how you feel. <laughs> well, we did plan a trip last year, but I was having female trouble. I know how that feels, too. <laughs> We were supposed to take a cruise, but we had to get off of the boat. My wife here gets seasick, so here we are. Well, uh, have a seat, will you? Oh. And uh, you can tell me exactly what happened? Well, I, I just couldn't keep anything down, <laughs> not even water. <laughs> Captain Miller? Yeah, right here. Miss Jackson, Board of Health. Oh, is that for me? No, just police officers, inoculations. Is there anything you need? Just some space and some bodies. Uh, how about over here? Oh, excuse me. What are the inoculations for? Swine flu. Oh, nothing for arthritis. I'm afraid not. Never hurts to ask. We were in a cab on our way from the airport to the hotel when this guy pulls a gun on us. Wait, wait, wait. Who's this guy? Who well, the cab driver. And you wouldn't believe it, because he seemed like a very nice person. That should have tipped you off. <laughs> we got everything we had. Luggage, jewelry, cash, even our traveler's check. Well, at least those are refundable. Oh, no, they're not, because he got our list of all the check numbers, too. Carl never mentions that. <laughs> 
Okay, right here, Mr. Fuller. Oh. Nick, yeah. check uh, stolen taxi cabs. Right. Yo, cab? Why, yes. How did you know? Experience. Oh. <laughs> Sergeant Philip K. Fish. Yeah. You're first on the list. Okay. But these things don't do much good for me. It could keep you a little healthier. Compared to what? Where would you like to get it? In the arm, for a change. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Lynch. My pleasure. Captain? You're next. I was extremely painful. <laughs> what are the odds that uh, this thing is going to keep me from getting flu? What are the odds that those people are going to recover their property? That bad. Huh? I was trying to pay you a compliment. I'll leave the miracles for medicine. Barney? Ah! I <laughs> uh, got a cab reporter stolen yesterday. There's an APB on it, no trace yet. All right, stay with it. All right. I think you're next, Nick. Oh, yeah. Sergeant Yamana. Sergeant Yamana. Yep. Have you ever had jaundice? You know, I lost my tan. This ain't no city no more, man. Says one big cuckoo clock. What happened? Where's Mojo? Downstairs with that crazy mother called Peckman. Look at this suit. 250 bucks, and I got dirt and grass stains everywhere. All right, Harris, I know how much you and your wardrobe have always meant to each other, but what happened? Look, we chased Kopechny into Central Park. And when we finally caught him, there he was, laying on the ground, kicking and growling and clawing at the dirt. Growling? What the hell is that? Protect me, Barney. He's a werewolf. I better put some papers down in the cage. Forget New Year's Eve. The best party is Saturday night. The Bulls look to start 2010 off with some magic of their own when they host Dwight Howard and Orlando. Bulls Magic, Saturday, 85 West on WGN America. Hey, listen, out of sight, retro night fans. Just go to WGNAmerica.com for more info on your favorite TV classics. Every day, thousands of animals throughout America are neglected, tortured, and often killed. They can't speak up or fight back against animal abuse, but you can. For just $19 a month, you can join the Humane Society of the United States in our fight to eliminate animal abuse everywhere. The Humane Society of the United States is the nation's most effective animal protection organization rescuing tens of thousands of animals every year and fighting against animal cruelty wherever it exists. But at this very moment, animals are still suffering. I've been treated so wrong, I've been treated so long As if I'm becoming untouchable For just $19 a month, you can be the difference between life and death for these helpless animals. No matter what you can afford, please call the number on your screen right now or visit us online to fight animal cruelty with your donation. Call in the next 20 minutes to join our fight and we'll also send you a free subscription to our award-winning magazine, All Animals. If these animals could talk, they would tell you they desperately need you to save them right now. Please call 1-866-499-3742 now to make your donation or go to saveanimalsnow.org. That's 1-866-499-3742.
I did not become a detective to spend my evenings rolling around in the grass with some Twinkie. Where's the coffee? I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> Hello there. You must be the nurse. Roger Howitz? Hardly. <laughs> Keep it down, huh? I really can't help it. It just comes out. Yeah, sure. Right. Is this our uh, man? <laughs> Stefan Kopechny, Captain. Guess what he thinks he is? A werewolf. Right. Uh, that was him howling down there. I was hoping it wasn't one of ours. <laughs> Thank God you got me. Thank God I'm off the streets. Sit down. Aren't you gonna lock me up? Just sit down. The sooner I'm behind bars, the better off you'll just be. Just sit down, Mr. Beckman. Just a few minutes, we'll get a little information. Oh, all right, but we don't have a lot of time. There's a full moon tonight. So? You're not Romanian, are you? Wojciechowicz. It's Polish. Well, then you wouldn't understand. <laughs> Just take my word for it. My great-grandfather was born in the Carpathian Mountains. When the moon was full, no one would come within a mile of it. You spell it the same way it sounds. Old Jehoiz. He was cursed. And he passed the curse on to me. Mr. Kopechny, are you under a doctor's care? What do you think this is? Some kind of take two aspirin and call me in the morning situation? I'm a werewolf, damn it! Don't you understand? How are you? <laughs> werewolf. And you didn't want to go to Yellowstone on account of the bears. <laughs> you gotta believe me, Captain. You gotta believe me. I, I believe you, Mr. Beckney. I believe you. Oh, thank you. A man wouldn't lie about a thing like that. <laughs> well, Bellevue. Barney, there really is a full moon tonight. Just make the call. <laughs> no, I probably don't even need this. I mean, I'm a very healthy individual. Quit flexing. Flex? Who's flexing? <laughs> it's my natural state. <laughs> That's better. You know, uh, in about 45 minutes or so, I'll be off. And, uh, you know, a couple hours sleep, I'll be ready for almost anything. I bet you would. I take it you're Woja Hoas. Uh, yeah, that's right. Is that a date? No, thanks. Roll up your sleep. Uh, I'm sorry. I got some important official business here. Oh, Joe. Let me take a second. Well, Barn, that's a dangerous man sitting there. <laughs> We could have been finished already. Look, I, those needles don't bother me anymore, and they bother anybody else. I uh, don't want to lose my train of thought, that's all. Can you do something else until Detective Wojciechowicz completes his interrogation? Sure. How many men you got downstairs? About 25. The good stuff's up here on the second floor. Grab the bag. Yes, ma'am. Hey, uh, Barney, I'm gonna, uh, give her a hand, you know, uh, for the help. It's only fair. Hey. Uh, occupation. Shipping clerk. They don't even suspect that in the office. They think I'm just perpetually in receiving. Quiet, courteous, somewhat attractive. Date of birth. The night of September 13th, 1943. There was a full moon. Uh, I think I'm gonna lock you up in the cage. Oh, thank you. Uh, fine. You. Oh, I'm gonna go downstairs and check Kopechny for priors. Okay, fine. Werewolf. <laughs> Some nutcake, huh, Barn? Probably. 
I mean, uh, that stuff about the full moon. Uh, teeth growing, hair growing. <laughs> More things in heaven and earth, Wojo. <laughs> Husky. <laughs> These are good, strong bars, I hope. Adequate, Mr. Kopechny, adequate. What time is it? 11 o'clock. I don't have much time. Neither do I. Wonderful, it's now an official epidemic that does us no good here. My men have now been working over 24 hours. I know, you're doing the best you can. We'll hang in there. Yes, sir. Uh, Barn, I, ch I checked the technique for prior, so he's clean. Fine. Hey, uh, Barn, about that uh, shot stuff. Uh, so I'll you better get it quick. Yeah, uh, I thought I'd just... Pass. Pass? What are you talking about? Didn't you just hear? There's an official epidemic. Uh, Farm. I got this thing about, uh, needles. That's because you're tired. No, it's not. Well, Joe, you gotta get the shot. If you don't get the shot, you risk getting sick and you will subject your fellow officers to the same risk. You gotta get the shot. I'll faint. <laughs> got a threat? Uh, it's a fact. What are you talking about? You were in the Marine Corps. You, you had shots all the time. Fainted all the time. It was embarrassing. Guys standing around making stupid jokes. Georgia, you're going to get the shot, and you're not going to faint. Suppose I do. And you won't hear the jokes. <laughs> Barney, huh? Manhattan South. I think they've located uh, the fullest cab. Oh, wonderful. At least somebody's working. Fish? Hello, hello. You all right? <laughs> wonderful. All right, take the uh, fullers down to Manhattan South. Why not? We think we may have located all your possessions. Why, why that's incredible. Just another day in the New York City Police Department. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you, Mr. Fuller. Likewise, Captain. Come on, Pearl. Oh, what, what time is it? Uh, 10 to 12. Oh, can't we stay just 10 minutes longer? What for? I think I saw his eyebrows grow bushier. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, a nice, quiet lunch. Uh, an attractive little out-of-the-way... Uh, I don't eat lunch. Dinner? <laughs> Breakfast? Uh, dinner and breakfast? Look, Harris, it happens I think you're a very attractive fellow. But I can't get involved. Well, you ain't trying. I'm gonna get engaged. Oh, yeah? Who's the lucky fella? A doctor named Friedman. Or a doctor named Engelberg. I haven't made up my mind yet. You couldn't make it. Are you ready? Yeah. Roll up your sleeve. Uh, can we do it in the captain's office? Forget it. She's engaged. <laughs> hey, hey, Nick. She's, get, she's getting married to a Jewish doctor. Lucky dog. Sick. <laughs> Anybody have the time? Uh, we'll be four midnight. Oh, my God. You feeling all right, Mr. Kopechny? I don't know. I'm starting to feel strange. You look fine. Don't you look fine? I don't know. Why don't you go take a look? Not me. <laughs> it happens slowly. Sometimes it's hard to notice at first. Take, 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 it, take it easy. Starting to itch. Oh. <laughs> That's normal around here. We... <laughs> My legs is wriggling. No, 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 don't do that. That just, 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 just it, it aggravates it. Don't, don't, don't. I feel hot and my teeth hurt. And my tongue is sweating. Try not to talk. I gotta get out of here. I need air. Come here, Kate. Hey, look, man. We 
we can't do that. Let me out of the cage! Uh, uh, how about some water? I don't want any water! I want to go home! I'm gonna get some sleep! And then I gotta go to work! Barney! 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 Look, uh, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. That phone call of mine was all a mistake. It was a joke. It was a joke. Let me out of here. Down, oh, down, 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 I swear. What change? Get down from there! Take a good look. Hair is growing out of his face. It's called a beard. Haven't you ever seen one before? Not in my family. Uh, we're here for uh, Stefan Kapakny. Yeah, he's over there. What's his problem? He's a werewolf. Okay, Mr. Kapakny. Am I going with them? Yes, they're going to take you to see a doctor. It's a waste of time. It's the moon. It drives me crazy. Something does it to all of us every once in a while. With you, it's the moon. With me, it's the accordion. Oh. <laughs> Doctors don't know anything about this. It's a very rare disease. You don't see a lot of lycanthropy anymore. Well, then, somebody must be making progress, wouldn't you say? I never thought of that. Good luck, Mr. Kopechny. Okay, here we go. No biting. Don't patronize me. I'm cursed. I'm not stupid. <laughs> Where's Wojo? He's in your office getting a shot. Well, good news, gentlemen. Relief has arrived. You can all go home. Oh, oh beautiful. About beautiful. time. Excuse me. I'm going to need some cold towels and a blanket. He fainted. I'm afraid so. I guess. No jokes. <laughs> nail clippers that slip and tear your nails? Ouch! Tired of struggling to see what you're clipping? Hate cleaning up nail clippings? Ugh. Now there's Sure Clip, the better way to cut your nails. With a wide rubberized non-slip grip, you get complete control. Its professional quality stainless steel blades are guaranteed to never rust or tear, giving you a clean, precise cut every time. The extra wide opening makes it easy to cut thick, hard nails. Look, even this stack of five acrylic nails is clipped with ease. And with its powerful three times magnifier with super bright light, you get amazing clarity. Just look how easy it is to read this fine print. The Sure Clip also features a nail clip cap that catches all the clips. Just open the door to empty it out. The Sure Clip has it all. A powerful magnifier light, clip catcher, and Sure Grip. It's great. The Sure Clip makes cutting toenails a breeze. It's great for people with arthritis or stiff hands. So, stop struggling to see what you're cutting. Stop cleaning up nail clippings. And stop losing control and tearing Ouch. your nails. Call now and get the Sure Clip with rubberized non-slip grip, three times magnifier, super bright light, stainless steel blades with extra wide opening, and clip catcher for only $10. As a bonus, we'll also include our four-in-one miracle nail buffer, which gives you a perfect shine every time. Plus, we'll also include our best-selling Miracle Foot Repair. Use it to repair dry, cracked feet overnight. But wait, call now and we'll double the offer. Just pay separate processing and handling. If our Sure Clips aren't the easiest nail clippers you've ever used, simply return them for a full refund and keep the Miracle Foot Repair and Nail Buffers as our gift. You'll get it all. Two Sure Clips and two four-in-one Miracle Nail Buffers, plus two tubes of Miracle Foot Repair, a $60 value for just $10. This offer is not available in stores. Call now.
To order your sure clip for only $10, call 1-800-792-8561. That's 1-800-792-8561. So don't delay. Call 1-800-792-8561 and order today. The Barney Miller New Year's Day Marathon is alive and kicking. Just another day in the New York City Police Department. On WGN America. <laughs> Booked in part by Spariva Handy Hand. <laughs> morning, Fish. Good morning. Hi, Roger. Good morning, Roger. Hi, Nick. Hey, uh, Barn. You want to guess what's in the box? <laughs> is it bigger than a shoebox? No. <laughs> Couldn't be. <laughs> then I give up. <laughs> Those aren't shoes, are they? <laughs> Come on, Barn, they're brownies. Oh. <laughs> Gloria made them. Gloria? Yeah, uh, this girl I met. She lives right down the street. She, uh, she gets turned on to police officers. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, try one. They're, they're good. They, they look wonderful, but, uh... I gotta watch my weight. Ah, uh, you too, huh? <laughs> Little spare tire. <laughs> I don't know that I would describe it that way, no. <clears throat> Gloria calls them love handles. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd like them. She paints. Oh, and she plays the flute. And 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 since I met her, she she ain't been hanging around the police station anymore. Good, good. <laughs> hey, uh, hey. Yeah. Want a homemade brownie? You make them? No. Okay. Harris, want a brownie? Uh, no, no thanks, man. Gotta watch the love handles. Hi, guys. Got your mail. Uh, morning, sir. Oh, good morning, uh, Levin. Here's your mail, sir. Oh, thank you. Got a copy of my service record. But you might want to take a look at it. It's pretty good reading. Uh, as soon as I get a chance. <laughs> You'll find many examples of initiative, dedication to duty, and loyalty, sir. Loyalty. Courage is also indicated. Good. What you won't find, sir, is height. There's not a lot of height in there. <laughs> well, shortness is a result of parentage, of which my mother and father were both very good examples. Five foot two and four foot eight. Dad liked tall women. <laughs> so I have humor, but no height. Levin, I admire your spirit, but... There are a lot of factors that have to be taken into consideration when choosing a detective. Religion. Huh? I believe there's a God. Good. I ain't crazy about the way he does things. No, but believe me, I got you in mind, but these things take time. Yes, sir. I'll be on duty till 5.30, sir. <laughs> Making it tough. Morning. There's a disturbance over at Washington Square. A couple of guys are having a duel with sabers. Sabers? I mean, sabers? That's what they said. Uh, Harris? Yeah. You want to go to Nick? Okay, Barn. <clears throat> hey, uh, Harris. Where, where'd you hear that expression? Love handles. Around the neighborhood. Coming, Nick?
These are our newly arrived surgeons, Doctors Trowbridge and Greenbaum. Doctor? 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 And Doctor. Well, we miss anyone? Why don't you gentlemen relax? Anything happening I should know about? Hey, what's up? It's Rick Dees, and turn on your TV. I want to watch television. Sundays to WGN America. I'm in rerun heaven. Ha, ha, ha. Because we brought back America's favorite show. Simple, uncluttered television with pop. We celebrate what makes classic TV classic. I need to calm down. I'm beginning to hear buzzing sounds. It's out of sight retro night. I always love TV. I agree. Sunday only on WGN America. I know you're all about self-reliance, fighting your own battles, and standing up for yourself. As your friend, you need therapy. I work all year to get you super low prices. Tara Swartz, Burlington Buyer. Now they're even lower. How low? Ridiculously low. We've just marked down millions of items. The year-end clearance at Burlington Coat Factory. Now up to 80% less than department stores. What if the person of your dreams is out there waiting for you? And what if eHarmony let you communicate with that person for free? The New Year's free communication event this Wednesday through Sunday. Start your year off right. Communicate with your matches for free at eHarmony.com. Will Rogers once said, We can't all be heroes. Some of us have to stand on the curb and clap as they go by. But for many World War II veterans like Stanley Zabinski, there never was a parade until today. Honor Flight Chicago is a nonprofit organization with one mission, to honor and to thank our American veterans for their courage during World War II by sending them to Washington, D.C. to visit and reflect at their war memorial. The veterans fly for free, made possible only through generous donors and volunteers. It's the least they deserve for our freedom. There are more than 30,000 World War II veterans living in the Chicago area. Find out how you can help give them the honor they deserve and the homecoming they've been awaiting for more than 60 years at honorflightchicago.org. Hi. Hi. Help you? Yeah. You got to talk about a man named Phil Fish? Right here. Hey, Philip K. Fish. Uh, that's right, that's me. Hey, Fish. Hey. <laughs> right, Slater. We went through the academy together, remember? Oh, Slater. Yeah, sure, I remember. <laughs> hey, that had to be what? 35 years ago, huh? Yeah. How you doing? Great, great. Uh, I was out in Queens for a while with the 165, but when they started with all that layoff business, Hartman sent me down here on TDY. <laughs> well, uh, uh, no kidding. Uh, just keep it calm, will you please? Just keep it down. Hold it, hold it down. What's going on here? You can't show it me, old Brazil. Wait, wait, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh, Barn, that's Polish. Really? Would you mind? Quiet! Quiet! social style. Ten człowiek mi obrazil! Says this man insulted him. On zasłużył na to. To był niemiły wieczór w teatrze. He said he deserved it. Something about the theater. Yeah, I'm an actor in the theater. Oh, he says he's an actor in the theater. Oh, right. And. I am a drama critic. I write for Polish newspaper. Ah, natural enemies. That man attacked me publicly in the newspapers. Every Polish-speaking person in New York will read that slander. I attacked your performance. And it was dreadful. Come on. Oh, yes, 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 you better not enough of that. Uh, Harris, would you take Mr. Uh, Makowski? Mr. Makowski with you. Oh, right and uh, Yamana? Yeah. You'll take Mr. Uh, Schola. With you, we'll uh, get all the pertinent details here. Would you gentlemen cool down a little, please? No more insults. So, you've been doing great, huh, Phil? 
Detective Sergeant. I'm proud of you, Phil. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, tell me something. Are you still married to Bernice Gruber? Oh, yes. What a woman. Boy, there was a time... Well, listen, the best man won. I beg your pardon? Name? It's Chola. Zbigniew Chola. You spell it like it sounds. P-S-Z-Z-O-L-R. Write your number down on a piece of paper. I want to give her a call. Maybe I'll take you both out to lunch today. Well, we don't go to lunch together very often. <laughs> Breakfast and dinner seems plenty. <laughs> Are you, uh, you an American citizen? Not yet. Oh, I, I was very famous in Poland, but I must leave it three years ago. I see. You people in America, you don't know what it means to be oppressed. <laughs> How long you say you've been here? <laughs> Oh, what a dancer she was. Remember the old Glen Island Casino? Glenn Miller welling it out there, Artie Shaw. Oh, she used to have a way of just sitting there, you know? <laughs> oh, look, I, uh, I better get back downstairs. Well, what do you say we talk again soon, huh? Yeah, 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 sure. See ya, Lucky. <laughs> we'll take care of it. All right. Hey, Barn. <laughs> Got a burglary suspect. A woman came home and found this guy in her apartment. Where? In the bedroom. What a dress. Oh. Yeah. 69, 67 West 7th Street. West 9th Street. He, she went out the window and went right across the ledge and up the wall and onto the roof. <laughs> Go with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, take care of running around up there. Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> you better take a couple of cars. Yeah, no problem, Barn. Oh, okay. quick energy. Makes it easy to get the jump on the bad guy. You know, he was once a fine actor with Polish National Theater, but now... You want a brownie? No, I want to go away from here. They're pretty good. Look, see, you dunk them, and they get nice and mushy. Thank you. <laughs> good word, mushy. Mushy, mushy, mushy. The play was The Sacred Bird of Krakow. Do you know it? I don't think so, man. Come on. Oh, it was, it was beautiful. I am the star, and the audience, they just worshipped me. And he? What does he say? Here, Janusz Makowski. That's me. Janusz Makowski plays his role like a howling jackass. It's heavy, man, heavy. <laughs> Jackass, he calls me. I apologize to the jackasses. <laughs> I don't think this is funny. <laughs> funny. Funny boy. Funny boy. Funny boy. What's happening, baby? And the music of life seems to be <laughs> like a bell. That is ringing for me. And from the way that I sleep. When the bell starts to kick. Is that right? Barney, Barney, Barney. Is your mother from Killarney? Hey, uh, Barn, I think he's stoned. Stone? What are you talking about? Hey, what do you say we guys go down to the beach and shoot some clams? <laughs> How many of these things have you had? Mushy, mushy. 
Paris. I think that I think there's something in these things. Have you had any? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's out, Barn. I mean, he and fish, uh, fish and he. You think you can still function? Hey, sharp as a tack. Right. Get these things, have them analyzed. Fast, Nick. Not that way! <laughs> I think you got hash in them, Barney. Hash? <laughs> From the way that I feel. When the bell starts to feel, it's almost like being in love. Bulls Magic. Saturday, 85 West on WGN America. Your favorite movies. Without the sticky floors. Catch Movie Underground every Friday night. Speaking to you from a distant Wednesday in the 80s, you are invited to come with me every Wednesday for a journey through time. Be right. Get a hit, Crush. Shut up. On Way Back Wednesday with Winslow on WGN America. Don't forget your fanny packs. remember. You think it can work? Oh, sure. I mean, nothing too complicated, but he can work. Complicated? Dial on the phone. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Rod <laughs> Precinct, Captain Miller speaking. <laughs> yeah? Right. Yeah, I thought so. Thank you. You were right. That's the lab. <laughs> Laced with hashish. God, I made a pig of myself. Anybody see my legs? Hey, I want you to go home. Come. We're about that long. All right. Fine. Ten toes. One's busted. You think you're straight enough to take him home? Not to worry. <laughs> it looks like this. Okay, come on. Take him home. Two of you, stay home until you feel better. Okay, hey, Barn, I'll stay. But I ain't never gonna feel no better. <laughs> better not drive a car. Take a bus. <laughs> hey, Bart. <laughs> if I can't drive a car, <laughs> I better not drive a bus. <laughs> we better go down the back way. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Uh, Hogan said you needed some help up here. All right. Uh, can you type, Levitt? Type. 
I take it that means yes. Yes, sir. All right. Hey, Harris, do this. Yeah, okay. I heard it. It goes squish, squish. Beautiful, man. That's beautiful. What's the matter with you? Uh, overwork, fatigue, tension. Right, sir. You said you could type, type. Very Chekhovian, isn't it? More intense. <laughs> no creasing. Acting Detective Levitt. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hold on a minute, ma'am. <laughs> Sir, Mrs. Fish wants to know should she wait dessert for Sergeant Fish? <laughs> Tell her he's out on a call. Tell her he's already had dessert. <laughs> Kit Miller, please, what are you going to do with us? Well, uh, considering the absence of the arresting officers and certain other unforeseen circumstances, <laughs> I'm going to release you. Oh, Jim Pierre Pancho, Jim Pancho, Jim Pancho. All I want is your word that from now on you'll find a more innocuous way of settling your differences. You promise? <laughs> promise. Thank you. Officer Levitt? Yo! I got to release you. Yes, sir. Step over here. Glad to see you get a break. <laughs> with you guys anyway. You know, you ain't human. You're a bunch of hot dogs. That's what you are. Is you all right? All the hell about it. Bojo? Yeah, born a guy right from three apartments, and he tried to get away, and me and Fish caught up to him. They chased me all the way across the roof of the apartment building. Then they jumped to the bank. Jumped. The old guy just went bang, zoom, boom. <laughs> You do that. That's got to be 12 feet across there, huh? What do you think? You're playing with kids? <laughs> hey, sit down, will you? <laughs> well, Joe, are you aware that those brownies you brought in this morning were laced with hashish? <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I don't feel a thing. I know. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> Verified by the lab report. <laughs> First time in 20 years, I felt really good. And it has to be illegal. <laughs> and gentlemen, free to go. Mr. Makovsky and Mr. Chola. Right. <laughs> yeah, thank you, sir. I remember your promise. Yes, yes, yes. You know, gentlemen, when you think about it, neither one of you would have a job without the other. I mean, what would a critic do without actors to criticize? And uh, Mr. Makovsky, who would ever have heard of you if it wasn't for the critics? I think maybe each of you owes the other an apology. Mr. Stola, what the captain says, it's true. And I confess I acted very foolishly. I left Poland because it was impossible to express one's true feelings, one's true commitments. And I'm deeply ashamed for trying to prevent you from expressing your own true feelings, honestly. And completely. Mr. Pistola, I beg your forgiveness. You have it. With gratitude and respect, Mr. Makovsky. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant, what are these for? Crowd control. <laughs> you uh, barn? Huh? How's this for? Well, Joe, I think maybe you better go home, huh? What's the matter? What's the matter? On the criminal offense, you type burglary six times. <laughs> Just trying to make a point. Arresting officer, you wrote Wojciechowicz, chief of police. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just 
get your coat and go. <laughs> Warren, I'm, I'm sorry about Gloria. Oh, okay, okay. Warren, you, you, you forgive us? We'll talk about it another time. Warren, to err is human. To forgive, divine. Mojo, will you get your coat and go home? Forgive me, Barn. Be divine. I forgive you. Thank you. Levitt? Boy, you ask the average guy to be divine. See how far you get. Right? Yeah, sure. Levitt, I want you to take Detective Woodrow Hoods home. Oh, forgive me for saying so, sir, uh, but he don't look overworked. He looks stoned. It's okay, Levitt. It's, uh, it was an accident, something he ate. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> True. I mean, that's why you're up here. Detective Wojohowitz and the others ingested a certain amount of hashish, gift wrapped as brownies. You don't have to explain to me, Captain. It's like eating poison food. I ain't gonna say nothing to nobody. Guy's gonna know when to keep his mouth shut. You can say anything you want. Everybody's heard about it. Not for me. Levitt, just take one your home. Yes, sir. Thank you. You don't have to thank me, sir. You scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. <laughs> one hand washes the other, right, sir? Whoa, Joe! Come on, let's go. Come on. Hey, Warren. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Fish. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Okay, take him downstairs, fingerprints and photographs. Right away. Come on, criminal python. <laughs> hey, what a lunch you missed, Fish, baby. What a lunch. What? Like I told Bernice, if you ever get tired of her, I'll take her in a minute. What a hunk of woman. And you want to know something? She still fits. Just a minute, just a minute. That's my yeah. wife you're talking about. Yeah, I know. My woman, you understand? My <laughs> companion. Mother to my daughter. Bad part. Take it I'm easy. Not gonna... You're behind this time, Slater. Stay away from Bernice, or you're going to answer to me. Now beat it! <laughs> Oh, my God, what am I talking about? Hi, Anne. How are you doing? Hi, Evelyn. I know it's been a difficult time since your mom passed away. Yeah. I miss her a lot, but I'm okay. Wow, that was fast. This is the check I've been waiting for. Mom had a guaranteed acceptance life insurance policy through the Colonial Pen Program, and this will really help with the cost of her final expenses. They have been so helpful and supportive during this time. Maybe I should give them a call. I really could use some more life insurance. Is it affordable? It costs less than 35 cents a day. That's pretty affordable, huh? Less than 35 cents a day? That's less than the cost of a postage stamp. So, you said it was guaranteed acceptance? Yes, it's permanent coverage with guaranteed acceptance for people ages 50 to 85. There's no medical exam or health questions. You can't be turned down because of your health. It fit right into mom's budget and gave her added peace of mind. You should give them a call or look them up online at cpdirect.com. I definitely could use more coverage. I think I will give them a call. Are you between the ages of 50 and 85 or know someone who is? Do you think that quality insurance at an affordable rate is out of your reach? For less than 35 cents a day, you can get guaranteed acceptance life insurance through the Colonial Pen Program. You cannot be turned down because of your health. There are no health questions or medical exam. Your rate will never go up and your benefit will never go down due to age. Guaranteed. These days, the average cost of a funeral is over $7,300 and social Security pays a death benefit of just $255. Don't leave a burden for your loved ones. Since 1994, over 6 million people have called about this quality insurance. There's no risk or obligation. Call about the Colonial Pen Program now. You'll be glad you did. 
Call 1-800-329-6049 for your free information and a free gift. That's 1-800-329-6049 or visit cpdirect.com. Call now. Hey, what's up? It's Rick Dees, and turn on your TV. Watch television. Sundays to WGN America. Ah! It's out of sight retro night. Simple, uncluttered television with parts. Sunday only on WGN America. on rolling on WGN America. Booked in part by Spariva Handy Hailer. Hey, Mar Mar. Morning, gentlemen. Another day, another collar. <laughs> <laughs> One might expect at least a chuckle, if only in deference to my rank. <laughs> Thank you. It's funny. <laughs> Good morning, Nick. Morning, Brian. Coffee ready yet? For what? For human consumption. <laughs> <laughs> funny. Funny guy. Fish uh, hasn't checked in yet, huh? Uh, not yet. He's still in that burglary case over at the old people's home. But Harris. Not in yet. Boy, what kind of creeps would want to rip off old folks at a retirement home? Thieves, mostly. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Captain. I don't have a desk again. Well, why don't you use fishes? He won't be using it much this week. He got pretty upset last time I used it. Said I scratched it. <laughs> How could he tell? Man knows his desk. Uh, I think we'll be all right. Hey, did, did you read the latest issue of Newsweek? No, was it supposed to? Hey, Bob, did you uh, read this report from the Rand Corporation for the Law Enforcement Assistance Administration? Oh, yeah, I know this report. What should it say? It says that uniform cops do all the work and the detectives are a waste of money. <laughs> Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Yeah, the last time they had an opinion, it laid off 3,000 cops. Who's this, uh, uh, Rand Corporation? Anyway. It's a company that don't make nothing. <laughs> Call it a think tank. Ah, a bunch of guys that lay on the beach out there in California and think about something. Then they write a report on it and make a million dollars. Sounds like a pretty good union. Detectives spend inordinate time polishing their image. <laughs> you believe that? <laughs> They spend almost as much time shuffling papers as they do cracking cases. Yeah. If detectives, who are the elite members of the police force, don't solve most of the crimes, who does? Oh, I, I'd like to know who does. Principally, the much maligned cop on the beat. Oh, man, who ever maligned the cop on the beat? Good morning, detectives. Without good cause. Got your morning mail. And an extra copy of Newsweek. Uh, thank you, we have a copy. Very interesting, isn't it? Mm, good magazine. Page 46, El Rando Corporation Reporto. Causing a big flap in the department. Mm. I hear the uh, chief of detectives is threatening to quit. Where'd you hear that? Hey, Captain, you guys aren't the only one with sources. <laughs> Captain? Yeah? I don't think it was me. I beg your pardon? Scratches on Fisher's desk. I mean, I got nothing concrete to go on. I just don't think they're mine. Have you told him? No. But I'm gonna have to. Morning. Good morning. How'd it go? You ever spend the night with old people? No. 
And there's nothing I can compare it to. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll be right there. Barn. Burglary in progress over at the uh, Canford Arms Hotel. Uh, Harris, go with Roger. Why me? I haven't finished polishing my image. Okay. <laughs> You notice uh, when there's real trouble, who they call. Hey, it wasn't me who tipped them off. <laughs> Fish, I was using your desk again. She one of Captain Miller's temporary assignments. Fish, you may not like hearing this, but there's something that has to be said. I didn't put those scratches on your desk. <laughs> What, Spratcher? Forget it. Uh, Fish, you gonna be around a while? Yeah, just a head cold. <laughs> self-reliance and fighting your own battles then standing up for yourself as your friend you need therapy these are our newly arrived surgeons doctors trowbridge and greenbaum doctor 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 Doctor. 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 And doctor. Well, we miss anyone? Why don't you gentlemen relax? It can be tough living with COPD, but I try not to let it slow me down. I go down to the pool for a swim, get out and dance, even play a little hide and seek. I'm breathing better with Spiriva. Spiriva is the only once daily inhaled maintenance treatment for both forms of COPD, which includes chronic bronchitis and emphysema. I take it every day. It keeps my airways open to help me breathe better all day long. And it's not a steroid. Spiriva does not replace fast acting inhalers for sudden symptoms. Stop taking Spiriva and call your doctor if your breathing suddenly worsens, throat or tongue swells, you get hives or have vision changes or eye pain. Tell your doctor if you have glaucoma, problems past urine or an enlarged prostate, as these may worsen with Spiriva. Also, discuss the medicines you take, even eye drops. Side effects may include dry mouth, constipation, and trouble passing urine. Every day could be a good day to breathe better. Ask your doctor if once daily Spiriva is right for you. What if the person of your dreams is out there waiting for you? And what if eHarmony let you communicate with that person for free? The New Year's free communication event this Wednesday through Sunday. Start your year off right. Communicate with your matches for free at eHarmony.com. It's the most mummerful time of the year. The performers you'll meet as they strut down Broad Street, a tradition that's timeless and true. The comics are witty, the fancies are pretty, and string bands are strumming there too. It's the most marvelous time of the year. Hey, listen, out of sight, retro night fans, just go to WGNAmerica.com for more info on your favorite TV classics. Morning, Barney. Oh, good morning, Good morning, Barney. Inspector. What brings you to our humble surroundings this fine day? <laughs> Just come back from that big toto over headquarters. Oh, yeah, heard yeah. about it. What a crock. <laughs> Some eggheads out in California come up with a large report. The whole police department goes crazy. <laughs> Probably like them actors out in Hollywood, Barney, huh? Bunch of tutti frutti, you know what I mean? <laughs> Except for the dupe, of course. <laughs> 
books. Yeah. Don't you worry, guys. I stuck up for you. I give them the facts of life, tell them how you're fighting for your life in the jungle out there. I'm sure the men appreciate that. I realize that, Barney. A bless a blaze. Go to your office for a minute, Barney. Certainly. It makes you feel guilty even going to the bathroom. <laughs> Not if you've been properly toilet trained. <laughs> One detective from every precinct got to go out on the beat, in uniform, one week out every month. Because of that report? Yeah. Ain't that a kick in the hind quarters? <laughs> oh, third grade is only? Yeah. Well, Jehoah, it's our only third grade. Oh, good. Good. Then that shouldn't upset things too much around here. You don't know Woe Jehoah's. <laughs> I thought I did. <laughs> My wife said they were a pervert, and you're arresting me. But look, Mr. Hemmel, you're not arrested yet, you see. Look, you were interfering with the police and the fire department. I want to go back there. I got to go back. My wife said they were Hold on, hold on. What's going on out here? Uh, look, this is Captain Miller. Uh, this is Mr. Hemmel. His wife was the victim of a purse snatching. My wife's being attacked, and you're worried about her purse. Just take it easy, Mr. Hemmel. Have a seat and tell us what happened. Well... We were walking in the hallway, and this maniac jumps out of the shadows, grabs my wife's purse, and runs into the elevator. I, I called for him to stop, but he didn't. Uh, Mrs. Himmel chased him into the elevator, and then it got stuck between floors. Ah. Oh, my God, he's probably tearing off her clothes right now. <laughs> Take it easy, mister. Take it easy. Purse snatchers are rarely rapists. <laughs> You've never seen my George? <laughs> See, we had to get him out of there. I mean, the firemen are trying to get into the elevator. He's driving them crazy. Mm. I demand to go back there. It's my right as a citizen to go back there and kill him. Take it easy, Mr. Hamill. If you don't behave yourself, I'm going to put you in the cage. Do you understand that? Just take it easy. Have okay. a seat. Park. Listen to me carefully. Don't ever marry a sex goddess. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> Hey, Fish, how you doing, boy? Gotta be back at the nursing home by lunch to watch the rooms. They'll all be gathered in the cafeteria for a lecture on roughage. <laughs> nursing home, huh? I thought he was starting to talk slower. <laughs> He's on assignment, Inspector. Oh, sure, Barney. The shoe fits, right? <laughs> My wife is being raped in an elevator. Well, keep it to yourself. <laughs> Don't yell on that filthy stuff around here. It's just the case we're working on, Inspector. Bob? Oh. oh. <laughs> and nobody is lifting a finger to do anything about Take it. Take it easy, Mr. Himmel. There's nothing that can be done until the fire department gets the elevator open. Don't worry, sir. If the men of the 12th are on it, your wife's in good hands. I told her to kill herself if she couldn't stop it. That's the spirit, Himmel. <laughs> Death before dishonor. Yeah, there. Keep the faith. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We'll uh, be right down there. Harris, they uh, they got your wife out of the elevator. Oh my God! Don't tell me. Uh, take it easy, Mr. Himmel. Uh, sit down. Uh, Would you? Uh, no, no, you stay. Uh, Harris, take Dietrich with you. Uh, Barn, I was on this. Yeah, I know. Case. We got uh, something to come up here, and uh... <sighs> what's come up? <laughs> it's uh, kind of an experimental. Uh, rotation program yeah for uh, third grade detectives yeah <laughs> it seems you got to pull uniform duty one week out of every month it's a temporary thing look have fun with it you know, like um like a social disease right <laughs> What do you mean? When the fun part's over in a hurry. Oh, Joe, it is a temporary thing. It's because of that report. Don't worry about it. In a couple of weeks, it'll all blow over. Everything will be back to normal. Well, I want things normal now, Barn. Hey, I worked hard to get where I am, and I, I'm staying. Oh, Joe, you don't have any choice in the matter. Well, I got a choice, and I ain't doing it. Um, Roger, can I see my office a minute? Fine. 
Barn, okay, I failed a sergeant's exam four times. All right, well, I live with that. But I ain't taking a step backward. Oh, Joe, as of this minute, you are officially on uniform patrol duty. I don't want to hear any more about it. I quit. Start the year $10,000 richer with New Year, New You at WGNAmerica.com. Tell us how you'd use the money to improve your life, and you could start 2010 with $10,000. Forget New Year's Eve. The best party is Saturday night. The Bulls look to start 2010 off with some magic of their own when they host Dwight Howard and Orlando. Bulls Magic, Saturday, 85 West on WGN America. I work all year to get you super low prices. Terra Swartz, Burlington Buyer. Now they're even lower. How low? Ridiculously low. We've just marked down millions of items. The year-end clearance at Burlington Coat Factory. Now up to 80% less than department stores. Domino's pizza crust to me is like cardboard. I hear what some folks are saying about our stuff. Your sauce tastes like ketchup. I mean, that hits you right in the heart. Most companies hide the criticism, and we actually based it head on. There comes a time when you know you've got to make a change. We improved everything. 40% more herbs in the sauce. New shredded cheese with tons of flavor. And a new garlic seasoning on the crust. We want everybody to try it. The deal is two medium, two topping pizzas for $5.99 each. If you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. All of it. Not half of it. All of it. <laughs> This is Michael Winslow speaking to you from a distant Wednesday in the 80s. You are invited to come with me every Wednesday for a journey through time. You're right. Get a hit, Crush. Shut up. On Way Back Wednesday with Winslow on WGN America. Don't forget your fanny packs. Anything happening I should know about? Hey, what's up? It's Rick Dees, and turn on your TV. I want to watch television. Sundays to WGN America. I'm in rerun heaven. Because <laughs> we brought back America's favorite show. Simple, uncluttered television with pop. We celebrate what makes classic TV classic. I need to calm down. I'm beginning to hear buzzing sounds. It's out of sight retro night. I always love TV. I agree. <laughs> Sunday only on WGN America. Don't move. Freeze! I'm a police officer! That's an order. Party at the precinct. The Barney Miller New Year's Day Marathon will be rolling your way. Are we gonna get to see it? For well, sure, we all are. Right here on WGN America. Book in part by Spariva Handy Haller. Right this way, Mrs. Hill. Georgia! Steve. What did he do to you? Don't be afraid to tell me! I'm fine, Steve. Mm -hmm. This is Mrs. Hibble? I know what you mean. <laughs> Right here. And this is our first snatcher? Uh, yeah, it's Mr. Schweikert. Uh, actually, he's been very cooperative so Somebody far. give me a gun! I'll kill him! I'll kill him! What are you talking about? I didn't do anything to her. Oh, sure! Sure! If you were alone with her for two hours, would you be able to keep your hands off her? I could, but don't go by me. <laughs> Sure I could... Okay, Barney. Mrs. Himmel, would you have a seat over here, please? Yeah. Detective uh, Dietrich will take your statement. I want a policewoman! Himmel. I know the kinds of questions you're gonna ask her! Please, please, absolutely nothing happened. Mark was a perfect gentleman. Mark? <laughs> Good call, Dietrich. Oh, we didn't have to do that much. Oh, you brought him in. Well, all we had to do was go into the elevator and pick him up. Well, he, he could have escaped. <laughs> There's only one way out of an elevator. <laughs> but you were there. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> For what? For being there. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Address? 611 West 135th Street. Hey, man, look, she's old enough to be my mother. What do you think I am, some kind of degenerate? I think you're a common, ordinary thief. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Looks like you have a full house, Captain. 
What can I do for you, Lovett? It's too bad those Rand Report guys aren't here to see it. What is it, Lovett? I'm looking for Woja Hoens. He's assigned to my squad. Uh, Woja just stepped out for a moment. Oh, I'll wait. <laughs> uh, might be more than a moment. Look, where'd he go? Well, we don't know where he is right now. Bugged out, did he, sir? <laughs> No, he didn't bug out. He just went someplace to think. Well, he's supposed to be on duty downstairs right now. Look, Levitt, I'd, uh, I'd appreciate it if you give him a little grace period. Huh? Got it, sir. I'll phony up the report. You don't have to phony up anything. It's just a question of a little time. Time, right. I'll just move the time back on the old sheet. Don't, worry. don't move anything back, Levitt. Look, one hand washes the other. Don't do anything. Is that clear? Consider it scratched. What? You're back. <laughs> Get out of here, Levitt. <laughs> Sometimes I almost think you're not kidding. So, Mrs. Hemel, what happened after the elevator became stuck? Nobody wants to hear that. Listen, I was a medical student. <laughs> kind of talk has no effect on me. It's the price you pay. Okay, Schweiger, let's go downstairs for photographs and prints, huh? Hey, hey, ma'am. Believe me, it was nothing personal. Oh, I'm sorry we couldn't have met under more favorable circumstances. Come on. Stop talking to him, George. You've excited him. You've excited everyone. <laughs> Look at this serendipity. Mr. Hamill, I was right outside the elevator. I heard a steady stream of good, clean conversation. Really, George? Really? Nothing happened? Nothing. Although it, it was a little close in there. Can we finish your statement now, Mrs. Hamill? What do you mean, close, George? Close, you know. Close. <laughs> Must mean something. <laughs> you have to keep a little mystery in your marriage. I wouldn't know. I've never been married. You never found the right girl? Nope. Anatomy class ruined me. <laughs> I suppose the guys uh, resent me for sitting at Wojo's desk. No, don't be silly. Well, I just have the feeling that in their minds I'm like a vulture, feeding on the carrion of a fallen comrade. <laughs> well, when you put it that way. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, don't force. <laughs> Hear from Wojo yet? Uh, no, I called this morning, nothing. Yeah, I went by there last night. He wasn't there. I'm sure it'll be okay. It's a typical reaction associated with acute self-deprecation or <laughs> loss of self-esteem. I don't think that's entirely true. But it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> I believe it. I mean, navy blue always depresses me. <laughs> Look, we're all reacting to that report. Well, there have been reports before, and there'll be reports again. The point is, we know who we are, and we know the importance of the work we do. Yeah. I, I got a lot of stapling to do. <laughs> Good morning. God, you look like you've been up all night. I was. I skipped the warm milk so I can stay awake. Anything? Case closed. Caught somebody. I caught everybody. They were all doing it, stealing from each other for a little excitement. Now that's depressing. When I accused them, they all stood there giggling at me. It sent chills up my spine. It says a lot about our culture, huh? Some cultures worse than ours. Some Oriental cultures have death rooms where they just take their old people and let them sit around waiting to die. Not in San Francisco. <laughs> Others starve their old people to death. 
When I was in medical school, I took a course in geriatrics. It's like a hobby with me. Get away. <laughs> All right, uh, brought a report. Yeah, and after I'm through, I'm gonna go back later and have a talk with some of them. Good. I'm sure they'll be glad to know that somebody's taking an interest in them. They got my wallet. <laughs> Captain, I haven't seen Mojo Hoetz yet. What do I do with my strength report here? Do whatever you have to. Bury it. <laughs> no, don't bury it. Fill it out honestly, truthfully, exactly as it happens. Is that clear? God, I hope so, sir. <laughs> Martin? Where the hell have you been all night? Went for a walk. All night? Yeah. It's not a walk, that's an odyssey. <laughs> okay, well, Joe, it's time for muster. Right? Yeah, yeah I just gotta get some stuff out of my desk. This isn't what it looks like. It doesn't look like anything. That's a healthy attitude. I just want to get some stuff out of here, right? I don't want to get that chipped. <laughs> Thanks, Dietrich. Here. Oh. See you next week. Yeah. It'll be okay. I mean, it's just a temporary thing, huh? And, uh, well, I figured... Why throw away a whole career on a quick, emotional, dumb decision? Right. I'll stick it out. Heck, maybe I'll make me a better cop. Maybe. Joe? I gotta break something. Yeah. Join the revolution in sleep known as the Sleep Number Bed. It's the bed that helps people sleep better and get back pain relief. It's also a great value. I think it's one of the, the smartest things we did was to buy a Sleep Number Bed. When we went to Silla Comfort, we didn't realize that the prices were so much lower than what we had been expecting and then what we were gonna get was so much better. Learn why the Sleep Number Bed is the best bed and the best value. Call now for a free DVD and brochure plus a free $50 savings card. The Sleep Number Bed provides ideal support and puts you in control of the firmness. Anytime you like, simply adjust the Sleep Number Bed to your exact preference, your sleep number. And because both sides of the bed adjust independently, it's perfect for couples. Steel springs can cause uncomfortable pressure points, but the Sleep Number Bed contours to your body. Imagine how good you'll feel when your muscles relax and you fall into a deep sleep. Need one more reason to call? The Sleep Number Bed is incredibly durable. Even after 20 years of simulated use, it remains in like new condition. Surprisingly, it costs about the same as an inner spring, but lasts twice as long. It's the bed loved by sore achy backs because it's clinically proven to relieve back pain and improve sleep quality. It actually lifts up the spine, allowing it to stay in its neutral position, so it's nice and straight, allowing the nerve system efficiency to flow the way it's supposed to. This is now the only bed that I recommend to my patients. There's just no denying that the Sleep Number Bed is the best bed and a great value. So call now. 
Call 1-800-609-7900 for your free information kit with DVD, brochure, and price list. Call 1-800-609-7900 and you'll also receive a $50 savings card just for inquiring about the sleep number bed. Ask about our risk-free 30-night in-home trial. That's 1-800-609-7900 for your free information kit and a free $50 savings card. Call now. potato, two potato, huh? Party at the precinct. The Barty Miller New Year's Day Marathon. Feeling the fun. Only on WGN America. Booked in part by Spariva Handy Hailer. Mail call. Harris. Harris. Fish. Or Jehoitz. Fish. Not here yet. Not here yet. Or Jehoitz. Captain Miller? You got anything for Dietrich? Nothing. But thanks for coming over anyway. <laughs> oh, sir. Don't you like to take a look at these posters? Posters? Squad cars have been picking them up all over the precinct. $1,000 Good Citizens Award to any person or persons who fatally wounds a criminal during the commission or attempted commission of a crime. Contact Lower Manhattan Merchants Committee for Social Reform. Bruno Binder, president? Hundreds of them all over the business district, sir. You must be kidding. A thousand bucks a head. That's not bad. I don't know. By the time you take out your withholding, unemployment, what do you got? Vigilantes. <laughs> That's all we needed. Yeah. Look, when I say we, I don't mean just we. I mean we. <laughs> Well, they can't go putting a price on someone's head. Well, it, it, it's, it's illegal, right, Warren? I'm not sure. Anything I can do, sir? <laughs> Thank you. Anything I could do, sir? It's okay. But it, uh, we'll, uh, we'll take care of it. Or Joe, contact yes, the Lower Manhattan Merchants Committee. <laughs> and get Mr. Bender to come by. So we'd like to have a little chat. Right, Warren. Uh, sir, uh, what time is the party for Sergeant Fish? We're not planning on a party, Levitt. Just a simple, dignified presentation of a gift. Yes, sir. If I may, sir, I know it's a bad taste to bring up the subject of replacement at this time, but I never let it stop me before, so I thought... We're thinking about you, Levitt. We're thinking about you. Thank you, sir. Well, sir, what should I do with Sergeant Fish's mail from now on? Forward it to his home. Then he'll be staying on at home, just as if nothing happened. <laughs> nothing has happened, Levitt. No, sir. Sergeant Fish will be at home taking a well-deserved rest until he decides how he wishes to continue what will undoubtedly be a long and fruitful life. He is not to be pitied. He is to be envied. There is nothing tragic about a man completing a job well done. This is not the end. This is the beginning. But no party. But no party. Yes, sir. <laughs> Favorite movies. Without the sticky floors. Catch Movie Underground every Friday night. St. 
Strange not seeing him here. I miss him. I miss his jokes here. Mm -hmm. Same each year, but yeah. I still miss him. Yeah. How's Aunt Stella doing since Uncle Joe died? Pretty fair, I'd say. You know, Uncle Joe had one of those life insurance policies through the Colonial Pen program. That's a relief. Mm-hmm. Aunt Stella used his insurance money to help pay for the funeral and other bills. You have life insurance? I sure do. Honey, it costs as much to bury a woman as it does a man. Sure. But at my age, I don't think I could afford it. You just need the right kind. We got insurance through the Colonial Pen Program at an affordable rate. Hard to get? No, you just pick up the phone and call. She's right. If you're 50 to 85, write down the toll-free number on your screen and call about guaranteed acceptance life insurance through the Colonial Pen Program. It's easy. It costs less than 35 cents a day. That's less than a daily newspaper. There's no medical exam, no health questions. Guaranteed. You can't be turned down because of your health. Your rate will never go up, and your benefit will never go down due to age. Also guaranteed. You know, the average cost of a funeral is over $7,300. That's a big burden to leave your loved ones. Make sure your family has money to help cover funeral costs, medical bills, credit card balances, or other vital expenses. So pick up the phone, call for free information, and a free gift. Call 1-800-593-5137 to receive free information and a free gift. Call 1-800-593-5137 or visit us on the web at colonialpen.com. There's no risk or obligation. That number again is 1-800-593-5137. Call now. I know you're all about self-reliance, fighting your own battles, then standing up for yourself as your friend. You need therapy. All right, Stemple, come on, get in there. Yeah, sure, at least I got a chance in here. What we got here? It's Harold Stemple, Barney. He tried to hold up a Ma and Pa grocery over on 10th. Oh, sure. You want to hear Ma and Pa? Pa had a meat axe. And Ma, she had a 38 pointed at my head. Empty your pockets. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Stemple was holding this little, uh, toad stabber. He told Ma and Pa to empty the cash register. <laughs> well, anyway, by the time we got there, he was on the floor whimpering. I ain't ashamed. I was begging for my life. Right. They had one of those reward posters in the window barn. Serata, can't you read? I didn't see it. I came in the back way, like a professional. <laughs> Mom and Pop didn't want to release this guy. We had to give him a receipt. <laughs> what a culture. All right, uh, check up a prize and ship him down to Manhattan. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. come on. That old lady, she was going to kill me for the money. She said she needed drapes <laughs> and a new dinette set. You heard her. Women, eh? <laughs> Cookie? Uh, Thank you, pardon. Have one? Hey, where'd you get these? Ma gave them to me. <laughs> <laughs> Accepting gratuities? She had a gun. What can I do? <laughs> I'm Bruno Bender. <laughs> Lower Manhattan Merchants Committee for Social Reform. The Mr. Bender of the uh, reward posters? Yeah. Is that him? Is that the nut? <laughs> Who's that? A consigned citizen. <laughs> Bender, I'm Cap Mello. How are you? Somebody called and said you want to talk to me? Uh, yeah. How to do with those reward posters you have around? What about them? Well, they're, uh, creating quite a stir in the neighborhood. How was supposed to. <laughs> Mr. Bender, our position on this uh, matter is that... They'll the... do the job. I promise you. The job, Mr. Bender, is ours, not yours. You're going to order me to take down the posters? What I'm going to do is ask you to understand the problem and to cooperate with and us. take down the posters? <laughs> Not make an already difficult situation any worse. And take down the posters? And take down the posters. <laughs> Had a feeling you were going to say that. Me too. I had the same feeling. It was in the air. 
<laughs> Can we count on your cooperation? Now, look, we can't keep taking it. We can't just let them push us out into the sea. We got to take a stand someplace. Yeah, I, I can appreciate that your intentions are good. And uh, I can sympathize with what you merchants have to go through. But the fact of the matter is that there are laws applicable here. And uh, interfering with the police. <laughs> Endangering the public order. Uh, littering. <laughs> if you fall down. Laws, huh? Don't give me laws. You think those young punks out there think about laws, about right and wrong? Huh. They'd just as soon slit your throat as look at you. Arnold, uh, DA's office is on the phone, line one. Excuse me. Yeah. Mr. Falconetti. Thank you. We'll get an official opinion on this matter. You don't scare me. <laughs> Well, uh, as far as we know, they were legally posted, yes. Well, there must be some other ordinance that can cover the situation. <laughs> Mr. Falconetti, could you uh, hold on a second? Yeah, just, just, just hold the phone. Excuse me a minute. He likes to use his own phone. <laughs> it's a princess. <laughs> Alex, right, Arthur, Mojo. Thank you, Mr. Where's uh, a retirement kid? Huh? Oh, oh, oh. I got it. Uh -huh. Oh, got it. Everybody. Well, he's a jolly good fellow. Appreciate the sentiment. You are telling me that there is no law to cover the situation? We've got laws in the city for everything. Spitting on the sidewalk, you can't smoke in an elevator. Did you know you're not allowed to keep a goat in Manhattan? Well, it's true. But there is nothing to prevent somebody from putting a price on somebody else's head? Barn. Uh, ho hold on, a dispatch just called. Uh, there's a shootout on Lexington Avenue. Excuse me, Mr. Falconetti. Uh, I've got to hang up now. There are some people shooting at one another, which at the moment is still against the law. <laughs> Who's on with you? Your mom. Uh, Nick, got some business. You know what I mean, Nick? Yeah. I'll call Code and get some cars. Break right one. Precinct reports a manpower request. Somebody's got a sign for these. And Barney, where's Fish? Uh, in, a, in a second, Inspector. Uh, Kogan, uh, we've got a 1040 on Lexington and... Uh, 18th. 18th. We need some cars. What, what time's the party going to stop, Barney? No party. <laughs> uh, uh, thanks. I'm gonna draw some extra weapons and uh, take some uniforms with me. Yo. Huh? Sir. What's the mess? Uniforms. I'm in one. <laughs> uh, all right, get going. Yes, sir. I'm on with you guys. Fish downstairs, man. Uh, it, uh, we don't know. Well, why don't you come to the bank? Huh? Look, I ordered the booze. I got ice cream down the trunk of my car. Very thoughtful, I respect. So? What did the DA say? Uh, the DA had a lot to say, Mr. Binder. So are the posters breaking any laws? Look, we're kind of busy around here, as you can see here. Why don't you just, uh, have a seat, relax, make yourself at home, Mr. Binder. Uh, Diedrich, uh, let's get Mr. Binder a magazine to look at, huh? I don't think we have one. <laughs> Something? Anything? Mug book? Wonderful. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> You're sending Levitt with us? Well, you may need help. Come on, let's go. Levitt? He's available. He's in uniform. Come on, he's a trained professional. Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's move out. Get a jump on a bad guys. <laughs> Enthusiasm, enthusiasm. <laughs> Party at the precinct. The Barney Miller New Year's Day Marathon is off the hook. I agree. So stay right here on WGN America. Booked in part by Spariva Handy Hell. Start the year $10,000 richer with New Year, New You at WGNAmerica.com. Tell us how you'd use the money to improve your life, and you could start 2010 with $10,000. With New Year, New You at WGNAmerica.com. What if the person of your dreams is out there waiting for you? And what if eHarmony let you communicate with that person for free? The New Year's free communication event this Wednesday through Sunday. 
Start your year off right. Communicate with your matches for free at eHarmony.com. Hey, dude, you Please, gotta... don't even talk to me until I have my coffee. Okay. Oh, hey, Tim. I'm Sorry, off. I haven't had my coffee yet. Oh. No. Morning. Welcome to McDonald's. Can I interest you in a... Not before I have my coffee. Premium roast coffee for just a dollar? Talk to me. Introducing McDonald's new dollar menu at breakfast. Try a cup of freshly brewed premium roast coffee for just a dollar each every day, and you'll see why nobody makes breakfast like McDonald's. I like your scarf. That's beautiful out, huh? I work all year to get you super low prices. Terra Swartz, Burlington Buyer. Now they're even lower. How low? Ridiculously low. We've just marked down millions of items. The year-end clearance at Burlington Coat Factory. Now up to 80% less than department stores. These are our newly arrived surgeons, Dr. Strobridge and Greenbaum. Doctor? 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 And Doctor. Well, we miss anyone? Why don't you gentlemen relax? It's the most mummerful time of the year. The performers you'll meet as they strut down Broad Street, a tradition that's timeless and true. The comics are witty, the fancies are pretty, and string bands are strumming there too. It's the most marvelful time of the year. Hey. You got a guy here murdered five people. Yeah. The guy must have been some kind of a maniac to do that. Uh-huh. It's a nice picture, though. <laughs> hey, did you ever see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire? <laughs> no, no, no big names, but just one hell of a good movie. <laughs> Can't we get an injunction, a restraining order, something? I want to get these posters out of my precinct. Yeah, hold on. Yes? Uh, Captain, um, Bernice on the phone. She wants to talk to Fish. Still not in? No. All right, t t tell her, uh, tell her he's out. He'll call her when he gets back in. Yeah. The question is, what can I do with Binder? I got him sitting in my squad room. Nice piece. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Your gun. Oh. <laughs> but you'd be better off with a 357 Magnum. You ought to come down to my store. I can get it for you at 10% above cost. No, thanks. You can stop an elephant with one of those babies. We're not supposed to stop them, just herd them back into the park. <laughs> Ah, uh, fish ain't in the locker room. I never would have thought to look in there. <laughs> it's not the kind of thing you pick up overnight, kiddo. Is that belong to you? No, not mine. Lyle. All right, now I'll do my own. Just step in here, please. Got him over here. Could I have an aspirin or something? My hands are still shaking. A man with a nervous system like you has got no business owning a gun. Hey, hey, hey. Quiet. Stay here with Detective Yamama. Any sign of fish down there? No. There's a big shootout on Lexington Avenue. There's been a lot of gunfire. One guy got hit. We put him in the hospital. What a mess. He's yours? No. Yeah, I don't think so.